Uh, we're doing time responses for prototype second order system. Here, as a reminder, is the transfer function of the prototype second order system. And I won't go through this again. We went through what impulse responses look like. Response of a prototype second order system to an impulse input. Um, and these were the overdamp cases and critically damp cases. No oscillation. If you strike this mass with a hammer and it's got a strong enough damper, it will move to some maximum extent and then sort of slowly come back and settle back to its original position. Original position without oscillation. That's overdamped and critically damped. Um, in the underdamped case, there will be oscillation um, inside an exponential envelope. Um, and we related this to pole place. The poles are on the real line. You don't get oscillation. In exponential decay or it's in the right half plane, exponential growth. It's, it has complex poles, you'll get oscillation. The higher, the higher you go up, Higher, further away from the real line, the higher the frequency. We went through that before. Now let's look at step responses. Responses of a prototype second order system to a step input. Uh, you could use Laplace transform to get all these. I'm not going to go over these. Uh, I never expected my students to memorize them. Um, I'll show you graphs of these in a minute, which are better for the intuitive feel. But to look at the under damp case, look at it. You get a sinusoid at a certain frequency, omega sub d, the uh, damping frequency. And it, it's, you can, it's, it's a function of the parameters of a prototype second order system. And you have this decaying exponential here. Well, there's an alternate form for this, which makes some things more clear. Um, this shows that decaying exponential, where sigma equals this zeta omega n. Well, I'll get to this in a minute. Here's what all those things look like. Um, here, right at one, these are for these numbers here are the damping ratio, damping constant. This one here, one is critically damped. This guy here with two is overdamped. If you look at them, they look kind of like first order system responses, just that exponential growth going up to some final value. Final value will be one in all cases. But overdamped and critically damped kind of look first arterish. Once you go underdamped, you start overshooting and oscillating. And the less damping you have, the more it overshoots, and the wider or the bigger the amplitude of the oscillation. Um, in fact, if, if zeta were zero, you have eternal oscillation. Um, Well, here's the words to a lot of those things. Only the underdamped case will overshoot. Um, only the underdamped case oscillates. Overdamped and critically damped look kind of like a first ordered system. And we'll talk more about this later. We can look at those cases and as first ordered systems with an extra pole. We'll get into that a little bit later in the course. And this last one you could read yourself. Um, let's look at that under damp case a bit more because that's where we're going to pin a lot of our performance measures. Um, here's the way we first described the prototype second order system transfer function. You could rewrite that with different variables here actually a couple of different ways, but this way makes clear 
where the pole the poles are. Poles are at minus sigma plus or minus j omega d. If you get it in this form, you know where the poles are. And we have formulas. You now, if you started with this version, you can figure out what the sigma and omega sub d are. They're functions of the zeta and omega sub n. Um, okay, how does all this relate to position, the pole position? Sigma is how far is the real part, or minus sigma is the real part. If, you know, if your pole is at sigma plus and minus j omega d, there, the sigma is this distance here from the imaginary axis. The omega d is the imaginary part, it's the distance from the real axis. And the omega sub n is this radial distance there. Um, further left the pole is, the faster the decay, the higher up, the further away from the real line, the higher the frequency, omega d. Bigger the sigma, the faster it decays. Bigger the omega d, the higher up the pole is up here, the higher the frequency. Um, we'll get into that because we're going to describe some performance measures of systems in general um, using the step input as a standard input. So that, that step input is kind of a standard way or the response to a step input provides us some standard measures of how the system performs. I'll get into this more later, but one thing is how much overshoot. How long does it take to settle? How quick do you get to, to where you want it to, to be? And a little later, we'll get into what's the steady state here. Um, and the beauty is for, a, for the prototype systems, we can we know these exactly. Um, and we'll get into all that in a little bit. But those performance specs apply to any system, but they can be calculated exactly for a second order prototype system. Um, for first order systems, there is no overshoot and no oscillation. Also, if it's overdamped or critically damped, there's no overshoot and no oscillation. A lot of these performance measures go away if you have a first order system or a second order system that's either critically damped or overdamped. Once, once you get to underdamped, then you've got overshoot and oscillation measures. So a lot of the stuff we're going to look at classified performance is based on underdamped second order system. And I'll get into those performance measures in, a, in another video. One, one major takeaway from control systems at all, I think, is this chart. Or get just getting an intuitive feel. If you're not talking about a million calculations, et cetera. Just knowing about this chart is a big part of control system and especially time domain analysis. Anyway, I'll stop that there. We'll cover more and other things.